One of these mornings It won't be very long You'll look for me And I'll be gone oh, I'm going to a place Where there's nothing Nothing to do We'll just walk around Sunday mornings. Amen. So we're ready to start. I'm excited. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Amen. If a scripture is ready, amen, I'm going to ask someone to be like popcorn over there. Amen. The hospitality. Sister Carol, uh, Deaconess Carol is going to give us a scripture reading. Amen. Followed by Oh, she's all, well, we wanted to read the scripture for the air, followed by, amen, uh, Reverend Garrison will do the invocation, invocation prayer. Psalms 9, chapter 9, uh, chapter 9, verses 1, 2, and 3, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart, I will tell of you, tell of your marvelous works, I will be glad and rejoice in you, I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, to humble ourselves before you and ask you, Lord God, that you invoke the Holy Spirit into this place, that your presence be felt, Lord God, as we lift up praises to you. We humble ourselves before you, Lord God, and we thank you for allowing us to assemble one more time. So, Lord, let your presence be known. Let your um, spirit be moved around from best to best, place to place. Well, we thank you and we praise you for us. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Let's all do a congregational hymn together. Why don't the praise team help us with a congregational hymn? Everybody stand all over the church. Come on, let's do a con. Let's get the, the professor, get them something they can really move on. Amen. Time is filled with swift transition. Time is filled with swift transition. No more time to move and Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, we
church. Amen. That's church. Uh, get your blood flowing. Amen. To get the spirit quickened. Amen. That's, amen. Jeremiah says like fire shut up in your bones. Make you move. Amen. Amen. We want to call on now our hospitality ministry to give us the uh, announcements. Amen. Uh, the welcome. I'm sorry. The welcome. Amen. Followed by the announcements. Amen. Let's welcome officially and then the announcements. My name is First Giving Honor to God, to our pastor, First Lady Askins, any visitors, please stand. Well, thank God for bringing us together another Sunday, and those that are watching also, God bless you, and have a nice day. Praise the Lord, saints. This is the Philadelphia Christian Church Ministries located in the heart of Ballet Edison community at 3400 Brems Lane. We invite you to come and visit with us. And if you don't have a church home, we invite you to come and be a part of our ministry. We have um, an anointed a pastor here in the name of Bishop Clarence R. Askins who delights in allowing you to give back the gifts that God has given you and help us in building kingdom here on earth. We want to mention to you that um, Dr. Shields is doing so much better. We're always glad to hear about that. And we do have um, other folks that are out sick. We want to keep in prayer for Dr. My Brother Branch and for Reverend Mother Hopkins. We want to keep her in prayer. So we will also mention that we are preparing for the pastor's anniversary. Of course, last year with the pandemic, we could not have it, which is usually in March. This year, again, because of the slowness of it, the uh, pastor's aide um, is planning it for the 13th of June on that Sunday morning. And the pledge sheets are available for you right after service. You'll be getting that, in fact, um, Reverend Charlotte Lightfoot Garrison will be making an announcement about that at the end of the service so that you can take your sheets home and those who are not here, we will have it mailed out to you. Thank you and God bless. Amen. We thank you for those announcements, the uh, welcome committee and the announcements from uh, our own sister Elaine Askins. Amen. Amen. We thank you so much for that. We're moving right along in the service, amen. Uh, again, I have no pastoral comments today, but I do want to continue to thank God for all of you who keep pressing your way Sunday after Sunday, realizing that you're not doing it for the pastor, but you're doing it for, to tell God thank you. Amen. I know you can sit home, and, and I know we got some people who say, I'll sit home and say, tell God thank you, and don't have to come out around folks. Well, uh, God honors the press. Can I say that again? God honors your press. And every time you press your way out to his sanctuary and lift up his name and praise the Lord, God honors that. Amen. And uh, uh, it's easy to take the easy road to say, I'll stay home and watch television or I'll listen to it on the radio. But it's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. Can I get a witness? It's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We want to move right on. Um, it's praying time. It's praying time. We. We are preparing ourselves to pray. And we're going to ask now that you continue to pray for uh, Minister Knight, Donald Knight. I understand he lost his stepmother, amen, if I'm correct. And his, also he lost, amen, uh, or his father is hospitalized at this point in time. And so we want to keep the, uh, our own minister Donald Knight in prayer and his family. Is that all right? Amen. And so we, we know that, it's, that sickness falls on all of us. We know that. That sickness will fall on all of us sooner or later. But you need to thank the Lord today. <laughs> you ought to say, Lord, thank you today for my health and my strength. Amen. And I just feel, I just, I, I, I just feel overwhelmed this morning. I just feel overwhelmed this morning that uh, 
that we have some praying warriors in the church. Amen. So we're going to ask that the music department come. Um, and after the music department come, then uh, Deacon Charlie will come and give us the altar call. Amen. 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 So prepare yourselves. Go in your tent doors. And tell the Lord thank you. I need help. Savior, that we invite him into this place today, because without him, nothing else would move. In times, we depend on him for everything that is done. So this morning, we just want to give him the praise. Give him the honor and give him what's due to him. And we will start off with lifting our hands in the sanctuary this morning into this holy place. Lord, we thank you for just being who you are. We thank you, Lord, that you keep blessing us, Lord. You keep putting your loving arms around us, Lord, and keep us from all things and protection. Thank you, Lord, for just being a good God. No matter what happens in your life, people, remember one thing. Sometimes when you think that you're all alone, and you think you have no one else to turn to, but let me say this, all you have to do yes. is just open your mouth and just say, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes we go through trials and tribulations, things sometimes that we don't understand. But he understands because he is a God that created us. He knows all about us. 
He knows everything that needs to be done. So we just thank you, Lord, for another day to have an opportunity to walk through the doors of Philadelphia one more time. Because it didn't have to be. We could have been carried out through the doors of of Philadelphia this morning. But Lord, he provided a, provided a way for us to walk through those doors to be here among the saints. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that we have a place to come to. We have a house of worship to come to, to get down on your knees and lift your hands and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything, Lord. Lord, you have done things, Lord, for us that I couldn't even imagine. You are a great God. So great. I don't know about you, but I couldn't wait to get to church this morning. Because I knew that God was going to meet me here. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. Minister Knight, let me say this to you, brother. Although you had death in your family, but let me tell you something. Death is not dead. All that is, that is another opportunity for them to carry on and live an eternal life with our Lord and Savior. That's what that's about. And one day we all gonna meet that, we're gonna meet that challenge one day. But you gotta stay prayed up and you gotta be ready. Just don't try to get ready today or tomorrow. Be ready at all times when the, when the time comes. So we just thank you, Lord, once again for just allowing us to step inside the doors of Philadelphia one more time. I'm excited about being here. Not just only today, I'm excited every day that God gives me an opportunity. So today, as we move along through the rest of the service, no matter what the word is that the preacher will bring forth, keep God, keep God on your mind. Keep him on your mind. So you gotta learn how to walk, you gotta learn how to walk with him. You gotta learn how to talk with him. You gotta learn how to be a part of him. So Lord, bless us this morning, Lord. Bless him in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, we lift our hands and give him the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Lead me, God, me along the way for if you should leave me yes. I will not shrink Lord let me walk each day with you lead me oh Lord lead me amen what a beautiful song what a, uh, we thank God for that fervent prayer amen from Deacon Charles Pratt, amen. Our senior deacon in the church, we thank God for him, amen. We're moving right along, amen. How y'all like this time? Come on, we're moving right along, amen. We're going to move right to the preaching, amen. We're going to move right to the preaching. We're going to bypass our offering for later on after we go off the air, amen. But we're going to, for our, our YouTube, uh, Folks, and for our Facebook folks, we're going to go right to the preaching. Amen. Amen. And we got a preacher in the house. Amen. How many of y'all know this, this preacher here can preach? Amen. Say amen. <laughs> 
I thank God for our preacher this morning. I'll, I'll do his introduction, amen. He can come with his own scripture reading if he has no one to read it for him. He can read his own scripture reading and then he can preach. But I thank God for Reverend Dr. Thomas Brown. For those who don't know on Facebook and for YouTube, he's a former pastor of a church here in Baltimore many years ago. He's been a member of the pastor's conference. I met him years ago at the pastor's conference under the leadership of the, the late, um, and I'm trying to think uh, who his name, but I know he served under Pastor Kaiser as well, but the late, um, what was his name? The past. York. York, Pennsylvania. Johnson. 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 Nathaniel. Nathaniel Johnson. Thank you for your help. See, that's what happens when you just had a birthday. You get 73. Amen. And I should know that uh, the pastor, Nathaniel Johnson, what a great pastor and a great preacher he was. And he was a great leader at the pastor's conference. So I had to get his name out there to let you know. So he served under him as well, and under the Reverend Dr. Pierce Carr Kaiser, who is the, now the senior pastor of Park Lane Baptist Church as well, my pastor. He also served under other pastors as their assistant, but he came here some five years or more ago when he said, Pastor Askins, I'm coming over to help you out. And I thank God I'm blessed to be able to have this man with all of his experience of leadership, all of his experience in pastoring to be on staff along with these other great pastors that we have. He's a giver. He's a giver. He gives not only of his time, but he gives us his substance. Amen. So often you got preachers out there that say they love the Lord and they just want to hoop on Sunday mornings. And then when you look at the record, they don't even give and then want to lead people to Christ and tell people, other people to give. But he's a giver and he leads by example. I'm glad to call him a brother beloved, a friend. I introduce to some and present to others just before uh, the praise team or the music team will come and render a selection and after that he will come with the preach word this morning. Uh, and I know if you pray for him, He'll preach. Pray for him and keep him and his family, his wife and the rest of his family in prayer. Amen. So with a round of applause, put your holy hands together and receive this man of God, the Reverend Dr. Thomas Brown. Hear ye him. Nothing like Love of my Jesus. Love like love the Lord. He will bring you through all situations. 
trust in the Lord. We give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The one that's the head of my life to my pastor, Bishop Clarence R. Askins. To all of God's children, under the sound of my voice, to those that's out in YouTube and Facebook land, we say good morning. I come this morning just giving God the praise. God is a good God. How many of you know that God is a good God? We do say thank you. I want to thank the pastor this morning for giving me the opportunity to stand in his pulpit one more time. To bring, thus says the Lord. We have a lot of preachers here at Philadelphia, good preachers. Preachers that don't mind preaching, they can't preach. One thing about the preachers here, yeah, they, when they preach, they have their own way of preaching. That's right. That's right. Say None of them compete against one another. I'm so glad that to be here at Philadelphia, and I want Philadelphia to know this morning that I love this church. We love you too, God. Amen. We love you. Right. Even though my heart's heavy this morning, we are preparing to lay my sister to arrest on Thursday. We just ask you to continue to pray for the family. Amen. My heart goes out to you. My brother, Night, my heart goes out to you. I, I, I know how you feel. But my brothers and sisters, as I, before I give you my scripture and my text, I, the Lord laid something on my heart last night as I was sitting on the side of my bed and giving God the thanks last night. And he laid it on my heart. He said, you got to tell the people in the morning to give your flowers, give your roses to your loved ones while they can smell them. Yeah, am I right about it? Uh, I, 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 he said, give, tell the folks this morning that the sound of your sound of your voice at church and, and the ones that's out in YouTube and Facebook land. Give your roses, your flowers to your loved ones while you can. Because when they close their eyes for the last time, yeah. You can bring all the flowers that you want. It ain't going to do them no good. The flowers go to the grave site and the, the, the grave uh, take us, just take the flowers and throw them away. So I say to you this morning, church, give your flowers. I don't know about you, but I have given my flowers to all of my siblings all my life. And it ain't too many families can stand up and say from a childhood up until now 
I have never had an argument, a harsh word between my brother and my sisters. Never, as I can remember. We talk to one another on a daily basis. And I'm so glad that my mother instilled that into our heart. I didn't bring you in the world to all God amongst one another. Can I get a witness? God is a good God. And I come this morning and, and if it's something that I say, I want you to say amen. That might touch your heart. Can I get a witness? But after I give you my scripture, I'm going to set out because my scripture itself preaches the sermon. Can I get a witness? And this morning we want to come from the book of Genesis. The first chapter 1 through 26. And it reads, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Then the 26th verse says, then God said, let us make man in our own image. My brothers and sisters, in order for me to, to get to my text that I'm going to give you this morning, I had to go through the scripture. I had to dissect it. I had to tear it apart. Can I get a witness? See, see the medical examiner when one died, in order for him to find out why that person died, he had to go through and take that body apart. Can I get a witness? So sometimes we have to go through the scripture and take it apart and tear it apart and re-put it back together. But as long as you don't add or take nothing away from it. Am I right about it? I, I think the word says that we don't add nothing and we don't take nothing away from God's word. Can I get a witness? In my text, after tearing up the scripture and putting it back together, I came up with a text. God don't need you, you need God. God don't need you. You need God. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be long. Y'all know that I'm not, I'm not a long-winded speaker. And when you get 76 years old, I, I, I don't cut back now. I don't hoop like I used to. As you can see, my, my hair is getting whiter. My eyesight's are getting dimmer. And my footsteps are getting shorter. I know I'm right about it. So I said to you, keep on living. You might not walk in my shoes, but you'll be there. Am I right about it? God don't need you. You need God. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I come right now just as humble as and just as humble as I know. Father, we just said thank you. 
We thank you, God, because you've been so good to us. We come right now praying, oh God, that you would use me this morning. Somebody here came to hear a word from the Lord. I didn't come to preach like Paul. I didn't come to preach like the pastor. Reverend Garrison, Dr. Franks, Minister Knight, but I come to preach like you want me to preach. Use me this morning in a mighty way. In Jesus' name, we pray. My brothers and sisters, we find in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, starting at the first verse, and it reads, and it says, In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. So that tells me that he made all things and it belongs to him. The darkness and the light belongs to him. He made it. The Bible says God created every living creature. God don't need you. You need God. And in the 26th verse, God said, let us make man. And he made man and woman in his image. That tells me that God don't need you. You need God. Am I right about it? God don't need you. You need God. The Bible goes on to say that God made birds and the bees. He made the air that we breathe. The wind that we hear blowing and can't see it. Am I right about it? You're right about it, God. You're right. God don't need you, you need God. God made every beast of the earth. He even made the fowls of the air. He made every creature that's upon this earth. He made the plants that's in the field. God don't need you. You need God. You need to look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, God don't need me. I need God. Oh, somebody didn't hear me. I didn't hear nobody say nothing. Nobody answered me. You know, they look at your look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. God don't need you. You need God. I know I'm right about it. Can I get a witness this moment? Why do we need God? We can't live without God. If God don't send down the rain, if he don't allow the clouds to give off the rain, where the earth can absorb the water and allow us to have drinking water, the body will die. 
I know I'm right, but I, I know what I'm talking In order for us to live, we need God's water. Some of you don't know that the body is made up of 60% water. The heart has a capacity of 73%. The lungs, 83%. The skin, 64%. The bones, 31%. God don't need you. What did he need you for? Come on, somebody ought to say it. God don't need you. And I'm serious about this thing. God don't need you. And God don't need me. The Bible tells us that we can't live without food and water. While food and water is essential to human life, do you know that Jesus? Do you know without Jesus that we are spiritually dead and doomed to hell? Yeah, yeah. Am I right about it? Doing, 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 we're talking about Jesus doing his time on earth. Jesus addressed this issue. In various of ways. You find in John 4, Jesus used the truth that water is accessory to our body in order for us to live. Jesus goes on to let us know that I am the bread of life. Can I get a witness? He let us know that I am the living water. If God, through his son Jesus, cut off the food and cut off the water, we are in trouble. Can I get a witness? God goes, Jesus goes on to say that goes on to say that I am the bread of life and that who shall ever come to him shall never hunger nor thirst oh I know I'm, I know I'm right about that in other words Jesus is letting us know that you need the father you can't make it in life without God. So you need to put God first in every thing that you do. When you roll over in the mountain, put your feet down on the floor. You need to say, Lord, Then when you lay down at night, you need to call on him and say, Lord, you allowed me to go along all day long. There's no hurt, harm, or danger come upon me. Now I'm ready to lay down and sleep and slumber at night. Lord, watch over me. Am I right about it? Watch over me. I need you while I'm sleeping. I need you to keep away the old hands of death. Lord, I feel like preaching to 
this morning. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Jesus, let us know that I am the bread of life. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you don't have eternal life. You don't have peace with God. You don't have forgiveness of sin if you don't have Jesus in your life. I know I'm right about it. Somebody in here ought to be jumping for joy this morning. God don't need you. You need God. The Bible tells me that Job needed God when he faced all of his trials and tribulations. Am I right about it? Jeremiah needed God. He was concerned about false and insensitive worship and fails of the truth. But I come by to tell somebody that you need to get your priorities in order. One of these old days, Thank you, Lord. I 
Am I right about it? What do you need God for? Ask yourself that question. What do I need God for? I need God for everything. I need him in my home. When my spouse is acting like a fool. I need him in my home. When my children are think they're grown and get disrespectful. I need him on my job. Cause folk have gone crazy. We're living in a time now that we need God more than we ever need him before. Folk are killing. The police are mad because one of their own was convicted and they gone on a shooting spree. We need God. We need God. We need God to step in. Folk that we have elected decided they don't want to help people that put them in office. We need God. I told you I won't be long, but I, I just wanted to let you know this morning that you need God. You can't do nothing without God. You can't even sit there where you are without God. God is the one that allows you to hear the word. He gives you ears so that you can hear his word. Am I right? He gives you eyes so that you can read his word. He gives you strength that you are able to come out in the house of the Lord. Am I right about it? Oh, Dr. Dyson, God don't need you. Dr. Frazier, God don't need you. sound of my boy and out into the Facebook and YouTube land I come to tell you this morning that you need God and you can't do without him you might as well get your house in order Because one of these old days, one of these old days, the songwriter said, you're going to look for me, and I'll be gone. Oh yeah, I know I'm right up right now. But if you haven't got your house in order, Come on now. You got an opportunity right now as of today to get your house in order. The word said, light the little candle in the window. Am I right about it? Light the candle in the window. And I come by to tell you this morning. Jesus thank you Lord the one who hung on 
the cross. Lord, how mercy. Yeah. Hung there all day Friday. All Friday night. Hung there all day Saturday. And all Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah. They allowed, he allowed them to pierce him in his side. Am I right about it, Digger Charlie? He allowed them to pull the old crown of thorns down on his head. Lord have mercy. Mary's little baby. But early, early, early Saturday morning. We don't know the hour, but the early Saturday morning. Sunday morning he got up he got up because he knew that we needed him am I right about that he got up and for that I said thank you I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on, on the law. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm, I'm going to wait. Is there one? 
might be somebody out in Facebook, land in YouTube. That heaven truly gave your life to Christ. They want to take this opportunity. Take this opportunity right now. If you're watching, and you want this opportunity, just take your hand and place it on your phone. And say, Lord, here I am. I need you. You don't need me, but I need you. Here I am. God is a good God. Without God, we're nothing. He said in his word, we are nothing but a dirty, filthy piece of rag. He said in his word, we're all ignorant and dumb. He calls us a dumb dog. Am I right about it? But God loves you today. He loves you so much that he woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. Oh, I love you, the Lord. I love you, Lord. Thank you for being the God that you say who you are. If there's not one, when you go home this evening, go through the book of Genesis, and it will tell you and let you know God don't need you. Thank you, Reverend. Amen for the word. 
Amen. We want to thank all of our Facebook friends. And we want to thank all of our YouTube friends. Amen. We're going off the air. And we want to thank them so much for tuning in. Amen. Amen. So, we'll see you next Sunday. Amen. And come join us here at the Philadelphia Christian Church Ministries, 3401 Brims Lane, A, and fellowship with us. And if you don't have a church home, amen, give your life to Christ, amen, or make this your church home. Thank you, God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. Amen.